This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Secret Square. Could it be Bob Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Soap, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Smidbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... It's Tuesday at 6, Wednesdays at 10, Thursdays at 3. That Darren Pamela Ferdin, um... Oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um... to Vast Wasteland, the video journal of popular culture. I'm Mark Schmidbauer. And I'm Wilbert Neal. And tonight, darn it, we're going to finish this darn Marvel Comics thing. Come, That's right. Come hell or high water, and there's been a lot of high water lately, but come hell or high water, we're going to finish it tonight. Tonight. <laughs> this show, this one right You can here. bank on it. That's yes, indeed. <laughs> but before we finish up Marvel Comics, we got to tell you that we're on Tuesdays at 6. No, no we're, we're not. not on Tuesdays at 6. I did do it up by habit. Darn it. We're on Wednesdays at 10, Thursdays at 3, and Saturdays whenever the engineer feels like it. Usually around 4.30 <laughs> or so. That Tuesday at 6 is out of there. Yeah, that's right. It's done. It's a ghost. It's a vapor. Okay. All right. And also, if you want to write into Vast Wasteland, you want to write into Box 151411. Columbus, Ohio. 43215. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marvel Comics. When we last left, we were talking about those darn mutants. <laughs> That's true. We were talking about the mutants. And, um, you know, before I, I got to say, I, I received an interesting comment from somebody. Um, a lot of people talk about how um, comics are such a, uh, I don't know, um, a waste of time or things like that. Well, I had a guy actually stop me um, yesterday. I was going to the bank. He stopped me and said, you know, it was, um, I was watching the, uh, the, it was the week of the basketball playoffs. And yet... I turned and I saw that you were talking about comics. And I said, hey, I gotta watch that. And my wife came in, you know, she had the stuff and she set it down. The basketball player said, you're gonna watch this? It's comics, honey. We gotta watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a man who so, has his priorities in place. That's right. <laughs> I'll find goodness. out what happened on a basketball that's playoff right. thing anytime. That's but right. it's comics, honey. <laughs> okay, these darn mutants. <laughs> Let's see here. Basically, you just can't tell your mutants without your scorecards there. If you don't have your scorecards, you just don't know who the mutants are. Um, 
Let's see. Let's Bye see. When we going. when we left off, we were still talking about the darn X Men. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> the X Men are pretty much the staple. The, yeah. Um, well, probably the grandfathers of the Marvel mutant community by now, pretty much. Um, let's see. Just here recently, they've divided themselves up into teams. They all got together from there, divided into teams. So we've got the blue team. And the blue team? The blue team. The gold team. And I guess one of them pretty much hangs around and the other one pretty much goes places. Who does what? I don't know. There's just two different teams and they divide up. All of them are controlled once again by the amazing Professor X. Yes, That's right. Professor X. He's still the guy in charge of the mutants even though they have their field commanders. They have their team commanders, their commanders that'll take them out on missions. Uh. Professor X is still the guy in charge, old Baldy back at the mansion, which has been through several incarnations itself. That mansion gets torn up more than well, you know. probably anybody's house should. <laughs> if you pick a house for a superhero team, you know there's going to be a lot of damage. And, this is and this is a place with very high insurance rates. <laughs> this is true. This is true. But it has a lot of sub-basements, and that's usually where they go. And the, the danger room. Doesn't it have a danger room or yes, whatever? Yes, the danger room is the room where they actually act out different scenarios they can program things in using the computer and um act out um dangerous things that could possibly happen what do you do when there's missiles flying at you from all around and <laughs> and giant walls are falling what are you gonna do who's gonna do what and where and there's there's tidal waves coming in and big gusts of wind and oh there's lasers zapping at you there's spikes there's chains there's who knows what all flying at you what you gonna do so they take them to the danger room there and they act about and say well this mutant can do this this mutant can do that and if they find out that somebody can't do something well then they create a new mutant yeah or they go out and find a new one yeah. so but anyway um, <laughs> we got a problem we better get a new member to solve it basically you just you just can't tell your mutants without a scorecard because now there are so darn many mutants in the marvel continuity and they 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 do things like they go into the future and they'll bring somebody back from the future and it looks just like somebody who's here now yet it's the one from the future, and so they might be good, they might be bad, because it might be an alternate future. That's right. And got, who knows what's happening here? And then <laughs> they'll send somebody back from the future to the past because something's going to happen in the future, and they say, well, if we come back and we get rid of this person, then that'll keep that from happening. But then everybody else says, well, wait a minute. How do you know which one is going to... Is it the good one? Is it somebody just pretending to be this one? Who is it? So you just, they just never know, and it just creates the whole big conflict again. And then you've got your things, well, by golly, there was this whole um, Dark Phoenix saga thing going on here. Um, <laughs> this is Marvel Girl, or, so um, from the original X-Men, the original being the first, the original four X-Men, five X-Men, excuse me, four X-Men and one X-Woman, and she, um... <laughs> Develop this power that was like the most incredible power on earth and the universe itself where she could um conjure up this phoenix force which could just come in and just obliterate whatever was the problem and the problem was this phoenix force itself became the problem and it made her evil because it was just so powerful she couldn't handle it and it warped her mind and yep. They, That's she, usually what happens when you get too much power. Too much power. <laughs> boom, you're done. <laughs> it's like power corrupts and ultimate power corrupts ultimately. Yeah. yeah. So um, she just, this thing just took her over and they had to take her, I guess, to the dark side of the moon to zap her and, and get rid of the whole thing. And so then, well, there was no more Marvel Girl. And then the next time you turn around, they got this from the ashes thing. She's back. And you find out, well, it wasn't Marvel Girl at all. <laughs> it was a simulcrum of Marvel Girl who went ahead and got all this power. And, and see, that's another. You, it, they come in with these simulcrums, and who knows where they come from. And somebody just creates them, and they take over the person's personality, and they take the original person, they'll put them, oh, in a basement, or, oh, they'll shoot them out into space. Or in this case, she was underwater in a cocoon thing. <laughs> And it's, 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 it's just it's just darn funny the thing that can happen in, in the comic book. Well, it seems like any, any more there are just so many superheroes that you, and, and this is true of almost all the companies 
there are so many superheroes that you really don't really have to have the supervillains anymore. You know, they've, they've kind of gone out of vogue, the whole supervillain concept. I mean, they're, they're, they're still the big ones, but you don't see, at least that, that often anymore, the idea of, well, here's the, the team of supervillains versus the team of superheroes. It's always, well, one supervillain has tricked a certain team of good guys into fighting another team of good guys. Yeah. <laughs> and they fight, and they figure out, and then they beat up the bad guy. <laughs> But that's about it. Or by the time they figure out that it is the bad guy, to be because, uh-oh, I better get out of here, <laughs> yeah. you know. And they always get away. I mean, there's, they, they, in the Marvel, there is the vault, but still there's only um, so many of these criminals that actually get caught. There's still the ones that get away to plot again another day. And so, well, you've, um, well, I guess this was an, an example of that. The X-Men versus the Avengers, where um, <laughs> one group, um, well, they, Magneto, who is like the, the big um, mutant bad guy, or was at the time at least, um, he was helping the X-Men at this point, but yet he was still wanted for um, world terrorism, and so the Avengers were sent in to find him, and the X-Men were housing him because he was trying to help things, and so they start fighting, and then you get the Soviet super soldiers who come in, because they want Magneto to, so they're fighting, and they're, everybody's fighting against each other, and it, it was just a great big mess. But what makes this one interesting, though, is that both the X-Men and the Avengers this year are coming up for their 30th anniversary. Yes, this year, this summer, is the big 30th anniversary for the X-Men and the Avengers. Now, yeah, speak, look out for those. speaking of the X-Men, uh, one of our technical people has told us that... Uh, that, that, that we don't have the details about it. Somebody has bought the movie rights to some sort of X-Men, possibly live movie. Uh -huh. Now, this may not be any big deal because it's based on Marvel's track record of just picking just horrible projects. Well, I don't think it's so much that. I think it's the. Uh, I mean, the characters they, uh, are great, but they just don't do anything right with them. They they screw around with them. And they say, well, you know, like the Captain America movie. Well, let's Red Skull is Italian. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Get, Red man. Skull is not Italian. He's German. Please. <laughs> But they, um, I think it's the idea that they just get a hold of the the name and the rights to the character somewhat, and then they just do what they want to. They never come back to the people who created them and say, well, what should this character do? Right. What should happen here? They've never done that, which is, um, well, they've got the X-Men cartoon, which is good, right? because they're pretty much sticking to um, what the characters can do, even though they're going a little bit out of the continuity and things, right. and not having the team together as such, they're still... Um, they're holding it together real, and it's doing well. It's mm -hmm. actually doing real well. And um, let's see another oh, another movie, the uh, the Fantastic Four More project. Movies. Yep. I heard that one. Unfortunately, has just pretty much gone straight to video because just skipped the, the uh, theater altogether. It just like the Captain America movie. It just was not good enough to stay <laughs> there. Long. It wasn't even good enough to get there. So. Right. Unfortunately, it's just gone straight to video, and I guess that one will be coming up here. So we, we, we certainly uh, wish the, uh, the, the X-Men people, if they are indeed doing some sort of live film, we certainly uh, wish them the best, but, I, but it's probably, <laughs> based on the track record, good luck, guys. That's, That's right. That's all i got to tell you. <laughs> That's right. Now, here, let's see. I've got some things from a historical um, standpoint. I've got the, the first appearance of Wolverine that was... Um, he was fighting the Hulk, actually, and, well, he um, showed up there, and they, uh, he was just pretty much a minor character. He just came in to stop the Hulk from fighting the evil, quote, unquote, um, character that he was fighting at the time. And because they were up in Canada, which, was, which is Wolverine's home stomping ground, right. and uh, he just came in to stop them because he thought they were just tearing things up. So we've got that. <laughs> we've got the death of Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, who was, well, now this isn't the Shazam Captain Marvel. Marvel. This is right. um, Captain Marvel from Captain Marvel, actually, from another planet. He was a, um, a Kree, but anyway, he was <laughs> given the power to pretty much uh, monitor things going on in the universe and stop anything terrible from happening. Unfortunately, once when he was... Um, battling one evil guy who was working with nerve gas or something. Um, the canister erupted and he was given a lethal dose or lethal 
inhalation of this gas. It was worse than nerve gas. And uh, he developed cancer. That's what this book's all about. The, he was the first, this was the first time that a major um, superhero was actually died. Right. And um, this was prior to 85 when Elmer yeah, DC. Is, this, this is, this is this like. This is Much like sure. early, this earlier is 80s? Early, 82. 82, yeah. And this is the first um, Marvel graphic novel. And since then, graphic novels have just taken off and right. gotten real big. And everybody does. All the companies do them now. But this was the first Marvel graphic novel. Mm -hmm. I have here the, the New Mutants, which was the um, first other mutant team other than the original X-Men. Right. That, um, Dr. Charles Xavier decided to take under his wing and take to the school there and um, nurture their mutant powers and all. And they have since gone on to bigger and better things. They're now parts of whichever X-Force is out there now. Excalibur. <laughs> Excalibur, X-Force, X-Men, Team This or That or The Other. <laughs> There's too darn many. And then this, the um, Crash, which was the first computer a generated um, graphic novel that dealt with Iron Man, and this was an interesting one also. Um, and then, um, yes, it's true that DC does have a computer-generated That thing. Digital Justice, Batman. Digital Justice. Now, now, I don't know why, because I thought, I thought all along that this was the first one, okay. that digi Digital Justice was the first one. Apparently, there's some sort of differentiation. We're not sure what it is. I think <laughs> that it's the idea that that one was the first completely computer-generated. Well, that could be it. I think this one had... Uh, partially. It was the... Um, all the, anim well, the uh, pictures were computer-generated, but the... Um, the words, all the scripting was put in later. Ah, it was I see. written in, I believe. So I see. this one, but it okay. has that um, distinction as being the first computer-generated novel there. Okay. Now Marvel does a thing um, called Masterworks, where they go back and they reprint early issues of um, different characters, and there's a masterwork of Spider-Man there, and one here for the X-Men early early X-Men things there, and they'll do, oh, maybe four or five different issues in there to show you how they got off the ground, their early nemesis and everything like that, and early problems they went through, which pretty much the same problems they're going through now, but hey, well, that's right. another thing altogether. Pretty much. <laughs> Here we have um, X-Men Days of Future Past, which was one of those interesting trips to the future things, and then coming back to find out that things aren't necessarily the way they were, but it, and, it, and then... Oh, if that one wasn't enough, <laughs> they got Days of Future Present, <laughs> where they brought somebody back from the future to the present, and it just kind of messed with things here, too. And by golly, then you've got your X-Men Extinction Agenda. Yes, the <laughs> Extinction Agenda. X-Men Extinction. Extinction agenda. <laughs> and the whole thing where they were trying um, to get rid of all of the mutants and um, problems on the island of Genosha, a well-known mutant-hating island, and yet mutants always go there. Try to figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, um, historically here, I have some things that are real hard to find kind of things. Um, <laughs> the amazing Alice Cooper comic. Yes, the <laughs> Alice Cooper comic, which was based on the Alice Cooper from the Inside album. And it's, a, it's just an interesting adaptation. It looks at the songs of the album, but it does them in, in comic form. And it's, it's just it's an interesting thing, an incredible interesting thing. Well, now there's a whole company that does nothing but it's, it, it's called Rock and Roll Comics. Well, yes, they're part and of the, all, the all revolutionary just, yeah. comic. Uh, and thing. they just keep... Every month, here's the story of, you know, name a band. It's a story <laughs> yeah. of a lovely rock group. <laughs> and this, one of the amazing Kiss comics, the first amazing Kiss comic. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, see, this, this is like a, a kind of a full circle thing for them because when Kiss started off, they um, wanted to do something big and flashy, and so they did the makeup, they did costumes, and it was like they were thought of as pretty much... Um, looking like comic characters. Right. And so, so they said, what the heck? We might as well go all the we'll way. Go ahead, we'll do a comic <laughs> book. And the amazing distinction of this one is that they went through and the members of KISS actually 
They gave blood and put their blood into the ink for the comic. Their blood is in the ink for the comic. Look at uh, they give their blood and they put it into the ink for the comic. And it gives it certainly a Certainly nice a very thing. smart thing considering, uh, considering what's happened in the last few years, but... <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> and then, of course, the first one was so good, they did another, another one. <laughs> another kiss comic. <laughs> Yeah, they're just fun things there. <laughs> and moving right along, see, Marvel doesn't like to just sit still and just be a comic group necessarily. Oh, no, they like to do parodies of <laughs> other people's magazines. Yeah. So we have Marvel of the Year in Review. <laughs> and they've just done several of these. Hey, let me see, 89, 90, 91, 92, yes. And each year they have a man of the year. This year it was Spider-Man. And the next year it was <laughs> Captain America. The next year, ooh, what was Professor X and the X-Men. <laughs> Fancy that. <laughs> and then the next year, it was the Punisher. <laughs> they have those. And then they do a Marvel Illustrated Swimsuit issue. <laughs> oh my. Take all the Marvel characters and put them in swimsuits, male and female alike. <laughs> and well, those weren't enough. No, they came up with a Marvel swimsuit special, which are all just swimsuits. Swims. <laughs> and they, they like that idea so much. They did another one this year. Another one. <laughs> Swimsuit issues. <laughs> and then they like to take their own, they like to pat themselves on the back quite a bit. <laughs> a <they>? lot. <laughs> a lot. Now, so, this is a big, uh, to me, this is a big distinction between Marvel and DC is okay. that DC doesn't do nearly as much self promotion as Marvel does. <laughs> I'm sorry. They'll, they'll take their incredible panels or covers or things and they'll put them in. A poster book! Yes, you've got a poster book of Marvel things there. The Marvel poster books. And they'll do them for their different, a lot of their different titles. Or just different characters. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> just Anytime the, just anything they can the think the of. Idea hits them, we'll do a poster you. magazine. <laughs> They're all over the place. And then along with poster magazines, um, the idea of trading cards. Right. Well, they'll do trading cards. I mean, DC's done some too, so Marvel has their, They've all their different trading card thing. Trading card market <laughs> has absolutely exploded. It has skyrocketed. It There's truly this, has. I'm trying to remember the name of this. This is actually a new area of collecting, and I can't remember what it's called. Uh, the milk uh, oh, caps. The, the Spog, spog. Uh. Spog. This is this is the new hot thing for collecting, and, and most people haven't heard about it because it's so darn new. Apparently, uh, if you remember, and they had, they had these when I was when I was a kid. Uh, I don't know. You may not yeah, have had these. Well, up to well, the sixties, right? These, they hey, had them. when when you went to lunch at uh, at your at your school, they had the milk bottles with these little cap things in them, and you pull them out. Little cardboard cardboard things. deals. Well, over in Hawaii, this has become a big thing. Apparently, I, I'm not sure what the reasoning is, but some company said, hey, we could use these and put, like, little characters on them and all this. Well, now, everybody's doing them. <laughs> everybody's putting out these, and they're called spogs. <laughs> and this is the big, new, hot collecting deal. <laughs> so, be looking for spogs at your neighborhood uh, newsstand or bookstore. <laughs> and we'll just see or comic book place. <laughs> But along with the, um, the, the, the trading card idea, they went in and they um, do the different trading cards, and then they got an idea and said, well, let's make a special set of trading cards. Let's make trading cards with great paintings on them, great paintings of our different characters. Say, so, okay, we'll do that, and we'll have these out there. Well, hey, some people might not want to collect trading cards, so we'll take those great paintings and we'll put them back into it, the comic, comic book. form. <laughs> so then you've got your Marvel masterpiece. You've got your comics. full merchandising circle there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's They've just, got a, them all over just the a set of these things here. It's incredible. It's amazing. <laughs> yes, I went out and bought them myself. <laughs> <laughs> and not to lose out in any angle at all. Right. My goodness, earlier this year, well, late last year in the fall and up through this year, Marvel, well, they've got a, um, a subsidiary company called Epic. 
Right. And Epic is um, released from the, the, the comic code, and they're able to do things that, right. that Marvel wouldn't ordinarily do in the their regular Newsstand comics. comics, right. Right. So um, um, they, they went out and they did a thing on dinosaurs, which are just really big now with the whole Jurassic thing going on. Right. So they, uh, they, and this is really an informative um, collection here of things on dinosaurs. They, they mention a lot of dinosaurs in here that I'd never even heard of, but yet you look at the Jurassic Park thing, and it's so a lot there of ones that they, by golly, who heard of a velociraptor before? Yeah. Before, and they're in there along with all the other ones. It's amazing. It's incredible. And then there's also the great um, brontosaurus, apatosaurus thing, you know, they, they make mention of it in there too, and <laughs> all this stuff that happened there. It's just incredible. So, Marvel Comics. And there's still other things, but we'll, we'll mention those in, in, in future shows. That's right. Well, um, while we still have time on the show, we wanted to start into our big uh, study of independent comics. <laughs> um, this is uh, an area that, when you go back to the very beginning of the industry, there really wasn't an, an independent market, per se. There were other companies that now are considered quote unquote independent but right. not really <laughs> uh, back then there weren't really major companies it was just companies doing comics right so. and there wasn't any real big ones that absolutely controlled the market <laughs> right at least not like there are now right <laughs> so but to speak. as you moved into the 50s you started to see companies that were you know for all intents and purposes i i, I really don't want to call them second rate because some of them did some really good work but because of bad management or or just because DC and Marvel just did such a huge job of putting them out of business, <laughs> uh, they never really made the status of, of, uh, of the big two. <laughs> and so you're, so you're talking about, um, uh, well, the first company that's, um, I suppose, still called an independent, although they've been around since pretty much the beginning of the industry, is MLJ Comics. Now, you probably never heard of MLJ, but you have heard of Archie Comics. That's them. <laughs> MLJ, and the amazing thing is this is one of the few companies that is actually owned by the exact same people that it was owned by when it first started. <laughs> now, that is amazing. <laughs> Truly amazing. None of the other companies that, that started back that then. <laughs> they've been owned by everybody and their brother. <laughs> so basically the same owners are still churning out the Archie Comics. They've been churning them out for years and years and years and years. And, <laughs> and why? Because they don't change. Right. And, <laughs> and, and see now, Archie Comics did a did a well, or MLJ Archie Comics. It's either way, really. Um, did something that um, uh, you saw a lot of companies lose their shirts when they did superhero comics because if superheroes didn't happen to be the thing at the time, they'd die. They'd be gone. Right. But what MLJ did was they'd say, well, we'll um, we'll bring out. We'll see. You know, when uh, superheroes are hot, we'll bring them out. And as soon as they start dying out. We'll just rip the comics right off the off the shelf yeah. and kill that comic, but we'll keep the character rights and we'll bring them back again <laughs> for another round next time it becomes popular. Yes. <laughs> and uh, actually, uh, finally, uh, uh, Archie said, uh, "Well, we've made enough money off of these, we're going to sell them to somebody." So they sold them to DC, <laughs> and so they DC came out with a independent, well, a, a secondary line called Impact Comics, which did not do very well in my opinion, mostly due to the fact that they had, at the beginning, very good artists and writers, and then they moved them out and put really fourth-rate people in, and, and they were really dopey stories, and, you know, although right now they're doing this thing called Crucible, which is pretty, pretty good, at least much better than, than they were. <laughs> but anyways, that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's one of the many companies that we'll be talking about next time, <laughs> as we go into our, into our big, uh, uh, extravaganza over independent comics. We don't know how long this is going to go, but I'm sure we'll... <laughs> I don't know if it'll go as long as the Marvel uh, saga was, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, we invoke that baby for all yeah. the <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll just, we'll just kind of try to hit the highlights of all the, all the various independent comics out we there. We will try. <laughs> That's right. And next time on Vast Wasteland, what are we talking about? What are you guys talking about? Um, you know, I just don't <laughs> you, know. You and Marty. Uh, well, it's, it's we'll their show, out. and we'll find <laughs> out. And then... We'll make something up. Right. And then <laughs> next time when the three of us are together, we'll be talking about Ted Turner. Ah. And the Ted Turner Empire O Cable. Okay. <laughs> so, for all of us here at Vast Wasteland... Or at least the two of us here. That's right. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody! Excelsior! <laughs> so be it. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland.